Okay, so if you all hear any squealing or see any of this in the background or hear anything, that's a little Madison. I have to do these videos with her up, down, regardless. I'm getting these videos out for you all. So it, please don't mind my table, we are. It's clean, it's just like been scratched up and stuff. <laughs> Oh gosh, I can see this is gonna be a crazy video. But these concept maps, I'm just using some colored paper that is just scrap paper. Mind you, I was in nursing school, what, three years ago? So this is the book that we used. Um, and it came with a workbook with like questions and homework assignments in the workbook, um, crossword puzzles, stuff like that. I actually liked it. It was just time consuming to do the homework. But anyway, so this is the book that we used. Comment down below, let me know what book you all are using while you're in nursing school. Um, and like what nursing program are you in, LPN or RN. Just in case like there's a lot of them, like the same book that's going around, I'll probably try to get one. But anyways, right off the bat y'all, when you get to the chapter, it's gonna kinda go over um, what is hypertension, different types of hypertension, what you should look for, things like that, patient teaching, stuff like that. Now, um, depending on your program, some programs will have uh, what do you call it? They'll talk about the drug and the disease at the same time. And sometimes you have just pharmacology and then you have med surge where the drugs come back up again in med surge when you learn about the actual disease. This is what the actual drug does. It's a hyper antihypertensive, but then there's drug classes within it. So as far as antihypertensive, there are one, two, three, four, five different drug classes that we need to go over. So we're gonna make a concept map just looking at the different drug classes and how they actually work because um, like I said in a previous video, once you understand the action of the drug, it really helps you to understand um, the side effects and what it's used for and what to look out for, patient teaching, things like that. Um, action is so important. That's why anatomy and physiology is so important because that we have to understand how these drugs are working within our body. Just use scrap paper, it's not that big of a deal. You do not have to use a ruler, but for the purpose of this video, I might try to use a ruler just so it can look real cute for y'all. I have a video just about concept maps. Definitely go check this out. But in these series, I'm gonna be looking at specific drug classes, specific drugs for you all, um, and making it like more tailored to pharmacology versus just a general, hey, this is how you do a concept map. But if you wanna know just how to do a concept map, go watch one of those videos. So as you can see, this is the center of our concept map. These are all our different drug uh, classes. And then we're gonna branch off from there and show the actual actions. So let's start off with calcium channel blockers. Went through the chapter and underlined some stuff because I did this concept map prior to the video. Um, but I am gonna be showing a video of like how you should actually read your um, your textbooks and like highlight or underline them just because I feel like some people they just highlight the whole freaking thing and it's like what's the point of doing it <laughs> you need to just only highlight what's important but anyway so um so calcium channel blockers inhibit calcium ions from going across the cell membrane um mostly for cardiac tissue and also for um muscle cells so this decreases the amount of transmission of nerve impulses because there's not enough calcium going into these cells so the the nerve impulses are not as uh, frequent or as strong as if the calcium was to go through and that's just ink all right so when you have less calcium going into the tissues the result of that is that the um, blood vessels relax there's an increased supply of oxygen to the heart and there, this reduces the heart's workload, thus decreasing the blood pressure. First, I'm putting what calcium itself actually does in your body. With me putting what it, calcium actually does, this is just a reminder for me to know how calcium itself works in your body versus just what this drug is doing. You have to understand you know, what's the importance of it. So put that there so that we know Calcium is moving into these uh, different cells of your body and it creates nerve transmission. So if we're gonna block the calcium, what's gonna happen? So once we block the calcium, this drug basically decreases, stops, inhibits, whatever you wanna call it, calcium. So I'm just gonna put my, um, like, yeah. note. 
like no calcium. So however you need to do it, like for your shorthand, definitely work on that. Develop shorthand when you're doing notes and um, studying because it's just shorthand. So it's gonna make it a lot easier. So it's gonna stop the calcium from moving. It is going to decrease the transmission of nerve impulses. Once your blood vessels are able to relax, then the blood is actually able to perfuse um, the cells, the blood chambers, what the blood chambers, the heart chambers, wherever the area where the blood is going, is able to actually flow through it easier and um, without so much force. And when that happens, you're able to get more oxygen to your heart. And then your heart, once it has more oxygen and your vessels are relaxed, then it doesn't have to work so hard to pump everything out. And thus, this is what creates lower blood pressure. Okay, so that's calcium channel blockers. Let's look at another one. So, okay, so for angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or ACE inhibitors, there's a few things that I underline. So, so what they do is they stop the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, which is a huge system. If you have not learned about it, you will. It's Seems crazy and confusing, but it's gonna keep coming up, coming up, coming up, so don't get overwhelmed by that. But basically, it's going to uh, suppress that system. ACE itself is a vasoconstrictor, so that's why I underline this. Remember, if we're constricting the blood vessels, then we're gonna have higher blood pressure. The blood vessels are constricted. This create, this, that constriction itself causes the adrenal glands to start secreting um, this hormone called aldosterone. So what aldosterone does is it promotes the retention of sodium and water um, within the body, which contributes to the raising of your blood pressure. This drug works is it basically it stops your blood vessels from constricting, which is happening due to this whole process of renin angiotensin, angiotensin aldosterone system. It's basically stopping that from happening and it's stopping the vasoconstriction, which the vasoconstriction causes you to, your body to secrete aldosterone. Your, when your body secretes aldosterone, it causes your body to um, hold on to more sodium and water, which raises your blood pressure. So if we just can stop this first thing, which is the vasoconstriction, which has to go with ACE, if we can stop that, then we can stop this whole cascade from happening as well. So this is how this drug works. I hope that makes some sense. It stops. I'm not gonna write the whole thing. Angio Tennyson, I'm not gonna write that whole thing. I'm just gonna put in Geo and a T. So it stops this process, which constricts your blood pressure, your blood vessels. So basically your blood vessels are not constricted. No aldosterone. And then here I'm just putting what aldosterone does so I can remember for myself. And then, so this would be like one, two, and three. So thus you have decrease BP. I like, for me, just with me learning this, if I was just learning this brand new, for me to put what this process does, um, what helped me to understand this whole sequence, also it will help me to understand what this drug is doing. So it's stopping, it's stopping this. Stopping this whole cascade from happening and it's helping us to reduce our blood pressure. Then we have the angiotensin two receptor antagonists. So if something is an antagonist, that means it's like it's against it, you know what I'm saying? So um, this is what I got from it. So these drugs act to block the binding of angiotensin two at different receptor sites um, in the vascular muscle and also in the adrenal gland. So remember we said that angiotensin, these ACE inhibitors or the ACE itself, angiotensin constricts the blood vessel. So if this is stopping angiotensin from actually being able to um, bind to these muscle cells and to these blood vessels, then it's gonna stop the vasoconstriction. And when it stops the vasoconstriction, remember, 
vasoconstriction causes aldosterone from being it causes aldosterone to be secreted and aldosterone de um, holds on to more sodium and water in your body which will uh, increase your blood pressure but if we can stop that whole cascade we will decrease our blood pressure so the difference between these two is this actually stops the process of the conversion this is why this is has this converting enzyme so this actually stops angiotensin from going to angiotensin 2 it stops it it stops it at that site whereas this angiotensin 1 is still converting to angiotensin 2 but once it's time for that angiotensin um, 2 to make its way to the actual blood vessels there's nowhere for it to go so there's a picture here I want to show you all if I can find it so this photo is not necessarily showing angiotensin and the actual drug but this is just showing you um, a synapse so you may or may not have learned this but you have learned it if you took AM if you're in pharmacology you took AMP so the synapse is where we have the actual we transmit nerve impulses hormones things like that from one area to another area this is called the synapse so the way that these drugs work so the way that these receptor antagonists work is they block um, angiotensin 2 from getting onto the receptor so let's just say this right here is angiotensin 2 and this right here is one of like your um, muscle fibers or blood vessels okay so these little sections right here is the receptor sites and these little areas right here are the neurotransmitters or the hormones that will then attach itself to these receptor sites and then cause an impulse to happen so what this drug does is it somehow it puts an enzyme right here or it puts something right here so that when it's time for angiotensin 2 to come around and attach to it and create the transmission there's already something here there's already going to be here there's already going to be some type of enzyme or something right here that's blocking the angiotensin from even doing anything so it's not working you get what i'm saying so it's already going to be covered up you can't it's not going to just move out the way for angiotensin 2 no it's going to be covered up it's already going to be a is that's how it's going to block the transmission i hope you all understand that i hope i'm explaining this the right way and i hope that it's getting through to you all um once again i'm not a professor i'm just a girl that can read that's a nurse okay so definitely Read your own materials and talk to your professors about it and get an understanding for yourself. But this is just my way of explaining it um, to help you all the best way that I can. And I'm just doing the best I can, okay? So basically, that's how it works. So. Now we're looking at beta adrenergic blocking drugs or beta blockers is what people usually call it so i'm kind of kind of i did not outline this chapter so i'm going to outline it for you all as i'm going through it so let's just read through it so beta adrener adrenergic blocking drugs also called beta blockers um they decrease the stimulation of the symp sympathetic nervous system so decrease stimulation of sympathetic nervous system that's what I'm underlining. To me, that's what's most important. And of course, you can highlight. Um, let's see. So these receptors are found mainly in the heart. Okay? It's important because we're dealing with antihypertensive drugs. So, so what it's saying is this decreases the stimulation. But normally, what beta receptors do is that they increase the heart rate. So... If we're blocking or decreasing the stimulation of beta blockers, that means that we're gonna actually decrease the heart rate. And if you can decrease the heart rate, then you decrease your blood pressure. It's being flow, it's flowing through the body a lot slower, and so it's creating less pressure on your blood vessels. It also dilates the blood pressure, the blood vessels. Over time, these drugs decrease the heart's excitability oops decreases the cardio workload and oxygen consumption 
and then it stabilizes the actual um, membranes of the heart and of the vessels which causes um, you to have antiarrhythmic activity. So this shows you this drug is also used for um, arrhythmias within your heart. So that's how that works. And then that like, was just a little example of how I would underline it so I can get an understanding. So I'm gonna basically take this same information and put it right onto our concept map. Make sure you like this video if you are starting to understand this information I'm giving out to you all. If you like the format, tell me ways I can, and, um, tell me any ways that you think that I can improve the format because showing you all stuff like this like actually teaching it is completely new to me i'm very like advice driven and girl just get your life type of driven and just hey this is just an idea of how to do it go as you will but right now i'm trying something different actually showing you all like the actual learning process i guess i don't know yeah it makes me a little nervous because i'm not a teacher it decreases stimulation of the sympathetic i'm not even going to write it all out sympathetic nervous i totally spelled that wrong nervous system um it could also just be a sns sympathetic nervous system um is that beta blockers sorry mainly on the heart so these receptors these are actual receptors that are on a heart. Remember what we said about receptors? Receptors are there, they're open, they're ready for something to attach to it so that a nerve impulse can occur. So these receptors are mainly on your heart. Is it blocks? Beta, duh, that's why it's called beta blockers. So it blocks beta and decreases the heart rate. It dilates blood vessels. So as you can see as a trend, if we are able to relax the blood vessels or dilate the blood vessels, meaning opening them up more, then we're gonna have lower, um, what do you call it? Lower blood pressure and also lower work on the heart itself. You can just open them blood vessels just a little bit. It helps the heart to not to have worked so hard to push through, you know? It's like, you're gonna have to work hard to get through this. Versus if it's open, you just flow right on through, okay? So that's enough of those hand and pen analogies. Fourth thing is I want to talk about all those different things that it says that it does. So what you got to understand is beta blockers are not just going to decrease the heart rate and dilate the blood vessels. It's going to do that, but in doing that, it's going to create a whole lot of other things for your heart, okay? All right, getting back into the book. It says that both of these drugs block the stimulation of both alpha and beta adrenergic receptors, um, which results in peripheral vasodilation. Remember, if we open up those blood vessels, we're gonna be able to reduce our blood pressure. That's super easy, like, that's all it does. <laughs> Is it blocks the stimulation of both of these um, receptors, okay? That's it, that's all it does. So, that's what we're gonna write. So we know that beta blockers are mainly found on the heart. They're found in other places, but mainly they're found on the heart. Alpha is found all throughout the body. Uh, I can't remember specifically where, but it's found not just, it's, it's not found on the heart. Anyway, so this is more peripheral, meaning anything outside the heart is peripheral, okay? So, um, that's how that works. So this is, our concept map for um, antihypertensives. This is just going off the action. As you can see, we put a lot of information on here. If you go to my video on um, the best ways to study pharmacology and understand pharmacology video, uh, it's so important to know the actions and I, I emphasize why it's so important. That's why I wanted to start off talking about antihypertensive by talking about the actual actions of the drugs. And I did a whole concept map for them because as you can see, it's a lot of different drug classes and there's a lot of different actions that occur. So we know that with these two, they're gonna help to relax your blood vessels. And when you relax your blood vessels, it's gonna create um, less work for your heart and thus your blood pressure is gonna go down. 
with the calcium channel blocker is going to block that calcium from going into your heart and once you block the calcium from going into your heart it relaxes the blood vessels it does a whole lot of other things and it reduces your heart rate now down here you know this is going to be doing more with your adrenal glands and with more hormones because aldosterone is a hormone it's going to stop that cascade in some type of way whether it's going to block it or it's going to stop the conversion of it so that's how that works to reduce our um our blood pressure so i hope you all understood this i hope that it resonated with you all if it did please like share comment let me know if you have any suggestions any requests i will be doing more and more videos like this because for one it's helped me to study the information and two like uh, people have been asking for us so i want to just be as much help for you all in the next coming months as possible so yeah thanks for watching peace